Good morning again, friends. It's Bob again, bringing you another Daily Devo, and we're continuing that idea of looking backward to move forward, looking back at the at the church in the book of Acts as, as at least a, an iteration of a, 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 an embodiment of God's grace and God's power moving in this fresh and beautiful way right on the heels of Jesus' resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Really incredible. Now, one of the things it says is the church was, everyone was filled with awe, but they were also filled with awe because the apostles, were doing all of these signs and wonders and it was alive that God was moving in power. Now, I think that in the West, we've kind of gotten used to the idea that God doesn't have to move in power for him to be convincing to us. But that's all part of our worldview, that we believe that, that we, we, we believe in the things that we can sense with our senses and with our five senses. And if it's beyond that, it really isn't very real. And so what the consequence of that in the West is that we have become increasingly and almost terminably cerebral in our walk with God. We've stopped expecting God to do things that are outside the box. We've stopped praying for people to be healed because we're kind of, we've prayed before and it really hasn't happened. And so we stop expecting God to be God. Not that God would do miraculous things because God is Miraculous things are only miraculous to us. They're just normative for him. He is not, he never acts supernatural. He's always supernatural. He never, it's supernatural because it's something that's beyond the natural for us, but it's not unnatural for God at all. And we need to, I believe, if we're going to look back to move forward, we need to recapture that, that God has to do things that, that we can't do for ourselves. That we, instead of just going to the doctor or instead of just taking an aspirin, we have a headache, we actually pray. We ask someone to pray for us. We ask someone to lay hands on us. We pray with faith. We say, God, we, we pray for your healing to come into this person right now. Now, I love the way that Jesus actually did it, and then the disciples did it, and then how I've gotten to actually participate in this over the years is that is that instead of just praying and asking God for healing, I actually speak the word of healing. That's what Jesus did. He rebuked Peter's mother-in-law's fever, and it left. Peter and James, and I mean, Peter and John, when they're at the gate called Beautiful, and there's the, the guy that's the cripple there at the gate, he doesn't say, well, I'm going to pray and maybe Maybe God will raise you up or whether he won't. He says, no, what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Rise and walk. And so he speaks. Jesus speaks. We speak. That we speak to the condition and it obeys us. Now, it took me a little while to kind of get, to get familiar with this because it's like, wait a minute. I'm not God. God's the only one that can speak and these things actually happen. But no, Peter and John did it. The, the, the disciples did it. The 72 did it that Jesus sent out. And Luke chapter, I believe it's 11, it's either 10 or 11, that they did it, that God actually says, you guys get to participate in this stuff. I am still moving powerfully. I am still moving powerfully. Now, if you are in a place where you think that that isn't happening anymore, uh, I'm, my intent is not to try to convince you of this. The reality is that all across the planet, God is moving powerfully in healings and deliverances, in even the dead being raised. Yes, even the dead being raised, planet-wide, these things are happening. They just aren't happening that much in the United States because, well, frankly, we don't need it. That we've said, God, we got this. We don't need you to be doing those things. We can persuade people all on our own to, to come to you in different things. Now, some of you might find that offensive. In fact, I can hear you saying that at that point in time. But here's the point. The point is that is that we need to start expecting and then moving on the basis of our expectation that God is going to move powerfully and that he will. We need for God to do things that only God can do, that we can't do of our own strength. I meet with people to counsel them, and my pr constant prayer is, Lord, I need for you to move because I can't fix them. I can't just hand them a Bible verse and that make everything better. I need for you to do something I can't do. I want to follow the lead of the Spirit. I want to move with you because you are constantly doing powerful things that we cannot do ourselves or for ourselves. And so in all of this, I want to challenge us today to begin to ask God also, not just to create awe in us, but to create a uh, some, some more rationale for the awe, that, that God would actually be doing these powerful things that we did not expect, but that he does these things, and we just go, whoa, whoa. Not Bill and Ted's most excellent adventure, but whoa, that we are in awe because God is doing things that are commensurate with who he is. We need to expect that God will do these things and then rely on him to do these things. I want to tell you, he is doing these things today. He is using people like you and like me. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have an infinite Bible knowledge. You don't have, that, have to have that secret sauce or, or the noodle dream. You don't have to have any of those things to be able to move in this. You simply have to be available and believe that God will actually do something 
through you and with you that you couldn't do yourself. And he delights to do these things. So that's our word to reflect on today. It's a very short one, but it's a very potent one. Let's ask God to do something we can't do ourselves. Let's ask God to move. In these situations that seem so impossible, let's ask God to move. In these diseases that seem so debilitating and so, so giant, let's ask God to move and let's believe that he'll move. Let's move with him in this. I think uh, Levi Van Ody is a classic example of this, that he was degenerating and degenerating and de degenerating, and it was so disappointing and discouraging. But then he began to believe God, and God actually intervened and brought healing into that young man in a fantastic way, in a way that no one expected, because God is still God. You can trust him. You can believe him. Many signs and wonders were done through the apostles, then after the apostles, and then now in you and me. We are the continuation of that message. We are the embodiment then of God bringing his kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdoms of the heavens, the kingdom of the heavens into this world's realm. And part of that is gonna be bringing healing, bringing deliverance, bringing freedom, bringing forgiveness, bringing the miraculous back into our midst. I love you. I'm praying for you. Thanks so much for joining me today. God bless you.